So it broke right into darkness. And then the crowd was just, it felt like we were back at the show in 2017, you know? So, so darkness was really, really good. I think I, I uh, text you guys, I text you and Greg and, and doing the song that he's ready to go on tour. Jeff, Jeff's theory that there is no tour is a, I, I love to say this more than ever. Mr. Callaway, you are wrong. He's ready to go on tour. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special trip report. Uh, my good friend, Dale Hozak, who has been on the podcast many times. He is uh, one of my wonderful friends that, uh, because of the podcast we've met, and we actually have gotten to share a couple of meals together, uh, all the way down from Houston, joining me to talk about a recent trip to the Big Apple. Dale, welcome to the show. Hey, Jesse. Great to be here, as always. Oh, it is so great to be here. Uh, we uh, we got to see each other for a, uh, a great lunch in November. You guys were heading to Austin to uh, hear the some little obscure band. Blues band. Cover yeah. band. Yeah, just the, yeah. Uh, and so uh, it was so great to see you and your lovely bride. Um, and so you're sharing with me at the time you guys were going off on a trip and I said, well, you should tell me about it. And you said, okay, so you sent me an email. So uh, before we get to the trip, for those of you who haven't heard the podcast before, tell us a little about yourself, Dale. Uh, Dale Hosick, uh, I'm old, uh, I live in Houston, uh, from Pennsylvania originally, then moved to Chicago, then to Texas, back to Chicago, back to Texas, long time in Austin. Uh, didn't really do the Bruce thing really until the reunion tour, um, back in the pre reunion tour days when the shows tickets were hard to find as was money in many cases at my house. So, uh, absolutely, you know, so a couple shows, uh, back on, I guess the tunnel of love tour was our first show. And then after tunnel, after the reunion, then we've been pretty bad. Uh, daughter went off to college. There was extra cash. Uh, we've been to Europe a couple of times and traveled with the tour. You know, I'm not travel with the tour, but follow the tour yeah. around. And uh, it's been a great time. And I think the highlight for both my wife and I is all of the great people we've met, both in the States and in, and in Europe. So uh, that's, that to me is, as much as we love uh, Bruce and the music, I think just, you know, uh, I got a list, you know, the Christmas card list gets longer every year from all my Bruce friends. So, you know, it's, it's really true. And you and... Uh you know, Jeff are on the podcast and we had such a good time talking about friendship. And, you know, I, as I said, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we got to meet for a lunch and just, you know, it was a little bit over an hour, but it was so much fun and so much joy. I, I think part of it is because we know we have a common sense of, you know, a common, you know, not only, you know, a love of entertainment, but a, a common um, thought about a lot of things, not socially and politically, which most Bruce fans seem to do. And we just, majority of, and I'm, there's always the exception for the rules, most Bruce fans are pretty good people. Yeah. And so you like hanging out with them. There yeah. is the there are exceptions. Like that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A, a pretty funny story this week is we get a, I get a Christmas card from a guy, Bill Ecker, in Olympia, Washington. Okay. I met him on the shuttle bus from the Hilton to the Oakland uh, Arena in 2007 at the beginning of the Magic Tour. That's my interaction with Bill, right? Yeah. 14 years ago. We still send Christmas cards to each other, right? <laughs> because, because. Because we can. Exactly. Yeah. That is so, so great. It is, uh, you know, it's a good part of the whole thing to me. It so, is. All right. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk about um, one of the things you have shared with me. And I just love your thought is um, experiences. Yep. You know, it is, you know, let's not 
regret, you know, the, the bottles of wine, not drinking, the food, not eating, and the concerts you haven't attended. So tell me about y'all mini vacation and, and let's yeah, go so through it. We, um, we were supposed to be in Vienna last week, but because of this pandemic thing that's been yeah. around for a day or two, we decided that Europe wasn't a good idea. So right. we said, what are we going to do instead? And so the idea was, well, let's go to Lake and George. And I'm like, ah, December to Lake and George is beautiful, but we need to go to New York City. So we planned to go to Pennsylvania, visit my mom, and then go to New York City at the end. Yeah. And then as I was planning it, the logistics just were a nightmare out that way. And if I, if I flip this trip, it's so much easier. And Joe was like, fine, who cares? So we flipped it, started looking at some things. And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, wasn't that Steve Earl benefit thing on that Monday night when we're there? And so I look it up and I said, yeah, and I see that all the, all the tickets are sold out, but they're resale tickets, but they're stupid priced. Right? Yeah. So that was like on, my, on a Monday. The next day, the Rangers had their big spending spree where you signed like two big free agents yes. for half a billion dollars. I yes. called our friend, Mr. Callaway, and said, what? Where did this money come from? Yeah. So I'm on this store and he goes, man, he goes, I'm really, I'm really concerned that there's no tour coming. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I don't know. Bruce just looks tired. I'm not sure there's going to be a tour. I came home and I told Joe that and she goes, I think we should go to the show. Right. And I'm like, okay, okay uh, I'll, I'll look some more for tickets. And so that night at like, I want to say midnight for some reason, I went on my phone and there were two tickets for less than $200 each. And I'm like, done. done. Right. Yeah. Again, experience, right. Who cares? Um, and so, you know, we're going to do uh, David Burns, American uh, Utopia. When we get to New York, we're going to do the Rockettes. We got uh, tickets from my friends at Coca-Cola for the Knicks Bucks game. And then we're going to go to the Temptations, the Broadway show about the Temptations. And we're going to do the, the Bruce, Steve Earl, Rosie and Cash, Bruce show. Um, we're also going to do the Carousel in Central Park. We're yeah. The we're going to do the Macy's Windows, the Saks Lights, all that stuff. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, my original focus was American Utopia because I saw it on Netflix or someplace and it's just visually stunning, right? And so yeah. that was our Saturday night. Um, I'm not sure that there was a story to the thing is there is much just his opinion and a lot of commentary, but the most visually stunning Broadway show I've seen. And we've seen like all the classics. Yeah. Because, I, I know, was going to ask because I've seen it on HBO. Yeah. And so I was wondering how, you know, seeing it live, I'm sure it was uh, much so more. A thousand times, like everything else live, right? Yeah. I mean, my, my, I, I took a picture, I put on Instagram of the one part where David's just standing on the stage and a one light on him with this huge shadow behind him, right? It's just like a, I like, I, have, I know there's no cameras allowed, but I got to take this picture. Yeah, just, exactly. Real quick. Like, yes. Yeah, real quick. Well, they throw me out of here, right? But uh, it was just, I really, really enjoyed it, you know? Yeah. And so, and so then we did, we did basketball on Sunday. We did a Cirque du Soleil. Monday, we did the Rockettes, fortunately, before they got shut down because now they're, they canceled their whole season at the end of the week because of COVID. Wow. Yeah. And Rockettes show too. I've been to it before, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, my daughter was a dance major. And so we've done lots of dance. And again, yeah. just spectacular at Christmas. Oh, I imagine. I just, this feels like Christmas when you're in New York City with the tree and the Rockettes and all those things, you know? So then uh, we did an early dinner. Yeah. Where, when we yeah. went, I was, I was surprised just how Rockefeller Center looks so much smaller in person i mean i'm not saying it's not but like you know you and i are in texas right like you go to the galleria that tree you know in the galleria whether it's houston or texas is huge you're like oh well yeah it's beautiful and it's new york but it is not it was it was beautiful it really was yeah. it just felt like you know people skating and all the angels and the lights and everybody's just in a good mood yes um, I think we felt really safe because the vaccination, you had to show your vax card everywhere. You had to show your ID. You had to wear a mask. I love I this. At least half the people on the street were wearing a mask. Yeah. Just on a normal walking around basis. Part of it's because it's cool, right? It's cold yeah. out. It's chilly. Yeah, so it's nice to see you. cold. It was chilly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it didn't, not like the, you know, nice uh, Houston to Christmas of this 80 degrees we're going to have. Yeah, we... So, same thing in Dallas, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, in fact, I asked Linda, I said, instead of doing traditional holiday, do we want to just fire up the grill and cook yeah. chicken and sausage and do, you know, like, you know, like, let's do a summer cookout. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, so it really felt like Christmas, right? So, yeah. uh, so Monday, you know, I, my whole focus is, all right, shows at eight, uh, 8.05, 
We have uh, tickets in the ballot. This place called Town Hall. Never been there before. Holds about fifteen hundred people, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was just. I mean, I honestly, I've never seen Roseanne before. I read her books. I followed her on Twitter when I did Twitter. Uh, I love her immensely. I love her music, but I never seen her because she doesn't come to Texas very often. Um, so excited by that. Um, you know, the show started. You know, so, so it's a benefit for Steve Earle's son. School. His son is has autism. Okay. He goes, he goes to the Keswell School, and so Steve came out and talked about the school to begin with. Between each act, he talked. Um, and so started off with the Mastersons, the people, the, the uh, I think his name is Chris Masterson, his guitar player, and then Ele Eleanor Whitmore, who are in the Dukes. Uh, they did a couple songs, and then um, probably the most inspirational part of the show, really. Mm -hmm. had a young man come out who uh, had autism, now teaches at the school. He played piano. He's a jazz pianist. And he played like three long numbers that he had written himself. Oh, wow. But, yeah. And just, you know, I mean, and, and he was not, he did not, you know, as Steve explained, uh, I'm not an expert on autism. Don't even pretend to be, know a little bit about it. But as he explained, there's whole different degrees. This kid, yes. Matt Savage, probably in his 20s. But he could, he talked to the audience and he could do all those things versus John Henry, Steve and Steve's son says he hasn't spoken since he was two. Mm. And so he's completely non-communicative. And I just, um, you know, I, as you know, I'm on the board of Special Olympics. And when you see the parents that deal with this, you're just like, man, my life yeah. is free to see to have a, you know, oh, yeah. a girl who, got a, who was a dance major in college. So, um, you know, I just always in awe. How are you a touring musician? musician? Uh, John Henry's mom is Allison Moore, who was John, Steve's wife at that point. Now, hey, it's Carl's wife. Mm -hmm. um, so you got two touring musicians and you got a, a, a son with a horrible case of autism, you know, and then Steve's other son is Justin Towns who, you know, died last year from drug overdose. And so yes. it's just like, man, that's, I, don't, I don't know how you're, how you're telling so many good stories. Right. But yeah. So Steve, so this Matt Savage kid, he played three songs and then Roseanne came out with John Leventhal, uh, another, you know, one of those guys that you just like to sit and have lunch with. I mean, he'd be way yeah. more interested in lunch than I am, Jesse, you know, but yeah. <laughs> But uh, they, they did a couple songs. They did a uh, Johnny Cash song. They did the Long Black Veil. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, and uh, and then and then Roseanne said, oh, "I'm sure you read it on all the reports." You know, I'm yeah. gonna go on Twitter and just say I opened for for Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> and, and so everybody laughed about that, you know. And it was it was a very much you know there was lots of people with their t-shirts on in the crowd and stuff. Not like at a normal show, but there was right. there was some here and there. But you knew people were there for Bruce. And and I assumed because Joe had asked me, "What do I expect?" And I said. I expect three songs with him and his guitar, right? Yeah. Kind of like, like the, the, uh, the, the other thing he does for the war, for the uh, war people, the war yeah. people, right? Yeah, exactly. Bob, uh, Woodward or whatever. Stand up for heroes or, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. thing, that thing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, getting old, I can't remember these names. And it's also I was expecting. Yeah. So after Steve came out and did a little talk, right? The Dukes came back out, like full, like, you know, electric guitar. And I'm like, huh. I wonder what this is, right? And then mm -hmm. Bruce walks out with the electric guitar over his, you know, on the guitar strap. And I'm like, this is not what I expected. Oh, right oh. The crowd, you could just hear the crowd go, ooh. Yeah, that exactly. What was expected. Right. right. So it broke right into darkness. And then the crowd was just, you know, it felt like we were back at the show in 2017. Oh, that's so but, awesome. But, you know, so, so darkness was really, really good. I think I, I uh, text you guys. I text you and Greg and, and yeah. Jeff doing the song that he's ready to go on tour, right? Yeah. Jeff, Jeff's theory that there is no tour is, I, I, I love to say this more than ever, Mr. Calloway, you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's ready to go on tour. He looked like he was ready to go. He looked like he was having so much fun. Um, the crowd was the crowd, right? Uh, I, I don't think I ever expected to see Bruce Electric in a 1500-seat theater. Yeah. So that was that was a beautiful part of that, you know. So uh, <clears throat> darkness was good, like it always is, right? I mean, it's particularly one of my favorite songs, um, and so it sounded just as good it does. And as much as we say we don't want to hear those songs, it sounded pretty damn good and pretty. Good. Fifteen hundred people were pretty damn happy to hear it. Well, you know, I've seen little clips, right? And and yeah. so it sounds like they were, well, certainly not the East Street Band, they were enjoying themselves oh. and just rocking like, hey, oh, wow. we're getting to play with Bruce F. and Frank Springsteen. Let's <laughs> do it. Joe goes, how do these guys know how to do this? And I'm like, first of all, they're really good. Yeah. Right? And 
And second of all, they probably practice a little bit because I stayed away completely from back streets, yeah. anything on social media. I don't want to know a damn thing. I didn't want to know because I knew somebody probably was at the sound check. Somebody, yeah. somebody. I think uh, I think maybe he's been on that Ken Rosen. I think he's been on your podcast. Yeah. Maybe. I think he had been maybe at sound check and said it was going to yeah. be. I don't want to know anything. I don't right. want to be sad, happy, whatever. I would have right. never expected electric though. And, yes. and the Dukes are really, really good. And so, yeah, they were, you can see on their faces, their big smiles like, yep, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Our, regular, our regular boss is a, is a legend, but this is the legend. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, Darkness and then Into the Promised Land uh, with, with some good uh, harmonica. Bruce, right down at the front of the stage, you know, we were in the balcony. And people down front that paid three or four or five thousand dollars who knows what they pay for those seats were they really liking it but uh there was the part you know i was like hmm what we're gonna do when we get to the sax solo because there's no saxophone on stage right so they just did a little uh the masterson did a guitar solo in there that fill it fit in but you, you you know we missed a clarence jake piece yes absolutely but still sounded great Harmonica yeah sounded absolutely great, you know and then i i think the I, I watched it today just to try to just to revisit it but the whole glory days where we sang the whole first verse, I, yeah. you know, not, that was not, that was not his plan. I don't think, um, I think he was as surprised as anybody. Right. But the crowd was just like, Hey, we're not getting a hungry heart tonight. So we're going to sing the first verse of glory days. Cause we know all the words. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it was, um, uh, cause he had brought Willie Nile back out on stage. Willie Nile played after the Mastersons or after Matt Savage. Before the, mm -hmm. before the end. Uh, I don't know if you know him, but another New Jersey guy. He's always, I've seen okay. him a couple of times. Um, and so he came out and did Glory Days with Bruce, but we sang the whole first verse. Right? Oh, and how fun. Was, I mean, and it was only 1,500, but you're in a little theater, so it sounds like it's, you know. Yeah, it's, sounds I mean, like a stadium. Yeah. Sounds like a stadium. And then uh, Steve came out and they did uh, Pink Cadillac to finish, right? And I think it was four songs, and I think the audience was completely like, that's good. We're happy, you know. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. We're not. We're gonna be not gonna be like the too many of the people go. Oh my God, we didn't get this. We didn't get. We got four yeah. songs on electric. We're happy. Yeah, yeah. we got four songs on a benefit. They're sharing yeah. the stage. Like, how yeah. many did Roseanne do? Roseanne did three. Okay. See, yeah. so yeah. I mean, because I'm like you, I've never seen her perform live, and I would right. love to. Yeah. I would love to. It was, see. it was beautiful. It was in a different way. It was. You yeah. Know, I mean, I, I don't know if you you know her. It's, I was telling Joe this yesterday because I, I was, we were talking about Rodney Crown. I said the strangest part is on his new album, John Leventhal is the producer. Mm -hmm. Roseanne Cash sings on it. Yeah. She's his ex-wife. He's the husband of his ex-wife. Yet they all work yeah. together in this crazy music world because yes. they're all so respected, right? Yes. And so he just played acoustic guitar and she sang and it was beautiful. It really was. I honestly, yeah. I would have been happy to see Roseanne and call it a day. I'd have been happy to see Stu Hur on call today. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, both of them plus Bruce for four songs. Uh, it, you know. Yeah. It was it was my good investment. Well, I always think of Marty Stewart in an interview saying that if you put a band together of Johnny Cash's current and former son-in-laws, you would have a hell of a band, <laughs> right? A Hall of Fame band. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, I've shared this before, and it's it, on a scale one to one hundred. Right? I was ninety nine percent happy, but you know, I had gone to Nashville to see him. You know, on the High Hopes tour, mm -hmm. and I thought, just it's Nashville. Is right. someone going to join him during sure. the encore? Right. And no, no one did. And right. that was fine. But right. right. But like I have one percent because I was like, you know, how cool would it be for Roseanne to join him or someone right. to, you know, just just to come out, right. uh, you know, it's always that always that thing. Right. I mean, yeah, Vince I Gill. Yeah. During the River Re River Redo tour or whatever, we went yeah. to Milwaukee and took um, my nephew and his wife. Yeah. And some friends. And I got a text from Greg in Dallas saying, hey, Jimmy Page is on the side of the stage. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, how does that work? Right. Right. And then and so then uh, I kind of dialed in. I said, oh, it's not just Jimmy Page. It's uh, one of the guys from Cheap Trick, too. Right. So this could be really cool. But they yeah. stood there the whole time. Right. Well, so, yeah. 
99 percent happy right exactly like, right well I mean, because basically the yeah. band, a natural person you know because in 2002 when i went to my first show it was the rising and um you know uh we had don henley hmm. joined him on stage to do i fought the law uh-huh okay yeah. Yep. And then my second show was at Devils and Dust there in Grand Prairie. And uh, uh, Jimmy LaFay joined in my Oklahoma oh, home. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is a thing. I've this gone thing. two shows. Right. Like, this is <laughs> yep. yeah, whatever local musician is there. Right. Bruce grabs him to do her, you know. And yeah. then um, several years ago, um, if the uh, Bon Jovi was going to be in Dallas the next night. And so right. he got and up and joined the him in Glory. Little girl show. The show yes, was the little, the little girl. girl show. Absolutely. Yeah, that, yes. show too. That, was yes. a, that was a horrible th those those two voices don't go together. Yes. Bruce and Bon Jovi. They don't no. work. But don't it work. was fun to see him do it together. Okay. <laughs> I'll I give just, you that. <laughs> uh, just the joy. Just the joy of them doing it. Yeah, yeah I get when, it. When he came to Austin, we always got Joe Ely would always that's really where I found that's really really I learned about Joe Ely. I didn't know him before that. Yeah, they out and they did um, all just to get to you a couple of times. Right? right. And at the Woodlands, didn't he show him at the last? Yeah, Joe came, yeah. Joe came yeah. out for the when they did a uh, Chuck Berry song or something. Yeah, something Lucille. I think so. Lucille. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, um, yeah that that's the, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah. I did hear I did have a guy um, that was just on the podcast um, wrote the book on John Hyatt. Right. Uh huh. And he, um, he, we were talking, turns out he's a huge Bruce fan too. And he, I just, he said, and he said, I didn't come up with it, but someone else did. Uh, when Mellencamp and Bruce's song came out, Seeger is somewhere going, hey guys, why didn't you call me? Yeah, I'm free, I'm available. Free. I could have done, we could have done the trio. Yeah. Good so okay. that's great. Uh, yeah. so, so anyway, so Bruce yeah. does the four. You four. guys are going, oh, man, we are on house money at this point. We're on house money. Steve comes out and does a great set of some classics. Obviously, Copperhead Road, where the whole crowd yeah. sings along. Uh, he uh, closed with his song. You know, he did a new, he did an album this year of his son's songs, Drake Passed Away. So he closed with the Harlem River Blues. Like, all right, uh, you know, in the gray, I think he did maybe, I don't know, eight, ten songs, something like that. I, I lost track. Yeah. Um, some old ones, some new ones, some I knew, some I didn't know. Uh, you know, Steve's catalog is very varied from rock and yes. roll to very twangy. Yeah. Um, but I could tell, you know, we we're concerned at one point because uh, Town Hall is an old theater with, um, I guess they thought it was winter house, so they had the heat turned up. Yeah. So it was warm when we started, and then Bruce played, and it was even hotter. Yeah. You know, I, like, I don't know how long we're going to last. Unfortunately, it was just, it was a, only a two hour show in total. So, yeah. Um, they, it's, he's like, before we go, um, we're going to, you know, the first time that I held this Graham Nash was here. And so we sang, uh, all together. And so they brought the whole group back out and Bruce came out and sang a verse, um, that probably everybody's seen online, Yeah, but there, cause there's some great video out there. Some people down close took a lot of video. Yeah, It was pretty security was really tight. The whole show, there was a guy running the balcony to make sure nobody took pictures, videos, and wore your mask. Yeah. And then Bruce came on and it was like all hell broke. It was like there was no yeah. rules. Right? Like, nope, <laughs> nope, we're going to do this. You know, yeah. um, I, t I talked about this earlier, um, and I think I may have shared that with you um, when we were in New Orleans to see James Taylor and Jackson Brown. Same thing, New Orleans, every place. You had to show your uh, vaccination. Um, you had to wear your mask. If we got into a cab, like, can you make sure you put on your mask? Uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, we were walking from the elevator to the front, um, you know, the front door of the hotel. And so we had our mask, you know, just hanging. Yep. And the lady very not, can you put your mask on when you're in the lobby? Oh, absolutely. So we very quickly like, okay, unlike Texas, people right. actually do <laughs> care. So that's great. Oh, yeah, that's well, wonderful. Because you know, the next day, everything went to hell. Um, we were supposed to go. So I told you we were supposed to go see the, temp the Broadway show about the Temptations. That was Joe's yeah. target. Mine was David Byrne. Hers was the Temptations. Yeah. I had fourth row tickets on the aisle, and at five o'clock, got a text or I got a message: the show's canceled. Oh no! No, no, no explanation. I, I think we all knew what it was. Yeah. Um, 
So we look at the list of shows. We've either seen, it's a Tuesday, so there's not a lot to begin with. Right. We've either seen everything or don't want to see it. She's like, well, I guess we'll go see Tina again. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a tough world. You want to see Tina again. Yeah. Right, because we saw Tina when it opened in London back in, I don't know, whatever year that was, 2018, yeah. I guess. And she loved it. So we go, we get to the Tina show. There's already, there's an understudy playing Tina. The main, first of all, the lady who was doing Tina before Adrienne Warren's not doing it, moved on to somebody else. But that night we're there, it's an understudy. We're 30 minutes into the show and they come on and go, we have technical difficulties. The cast needs to leave the stage right now. I'm like, mm. that's strange. I didn't hear any technical difficulties. Right. Like 30 minutes, nothing happens. And I'm like, the show's getting canceled. Right. And so they came back and said, the role of Tina is now being played by blah, 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 some other person. So we're down to we're down to the JV at this time. Yes, right? exactly. Right. <laughs> um, and she was fine. It wasn't the same show because it just wasn't. And, and then the next day, that whole Wednesday's both shows were canceled. You know, and now Broadway, everything is being canceled. Yeah. So, so sad. So sad. Right. And, and we just got out of there in time and reality. And That's then we good. come home. We're supposed to take the granddaughter to see Little Mermaid on Wednesday, the musical here. Got an email tonight, canceled. So oh, no. right back into this mess, right? And <laughs> yeah. you know, and I, I I know you're not on Twitter anymore, but our 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 our, our boy Jason Isbell is just fighting the good fight with to- yeah. trolls that are on there. Uh, yeah. you know, he just um <laughs> someone said, I can't believe you're making you have the rules that someone has to have a vaccine yeah. and he he says excuse the bluntness right like he said there's also a rule that you have to cover your balls i don't see you complaining about that i i just don't get it right it's like, i don't either kids, you know i mean here's the deal we're all getting our vaccines we're all following the rules we're following masks and it's still out of control what the hell would it be like if it, we weren't oh absolutely you know? and it, i i think the problem is this omicron thing is really transmissible, obviously, the way it's spreading, but from what I'm reading, not as dangerous. And I'm not a, yeah. I'm not going to blame for being an epidemiologist, but that's what I've been yeah. re- when I'm reading. And so, but still, I mean, you know, we, we came home from the trip early and we didn't have anything to do yesterday. And I said, hey, there's an opera downtown. You want to go to that? And she goes, no, big crowd. No. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the little movie theater, right? And we can sit in our little pod by ourselves and be safe. Yeah. And watch Lucy and Ricky uh, beyond the big screen. How was right that? Up. I learned a lot. Yeah, I did not know Lucille Ball was not the nice person that we saw, and I love Lucy. Yes. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I know that I just finished. I, I watched a couple of weeks ago um, this documentary on Star Trek, and um, you know, as a TV executive, she brought us Mission Impossible and Star Trek. Yeah. Those were the two shows that she believed in mm-hmm. and Desilu Studios, she, yep. she was behind them and worked them and uh, pretty, pretty amazing. I, I always love anything Aaron Sorkin writes. So I, I'm uh, I, I found it to be movie. a really entertaining movie. It was over two hours and I was entertained because it was, uh, it was, it was the week of the show when she was being, um, you know, publicized that she was a communist. It was that week. Yeah. They, but, but in between they did flashbacks to other parts of their lives and, all that yeah. stuff. It was, it was I, I was entertained by it. That's all good. I grabbed for a movie, you know. Good. All so, right. So before I let you go, um, do what's your, let's say we get ahead of this and people pull their heads out of their asses and we either get herd immunity or yeah. people finally wise up and get, and you know. I, I, I really, I think, really think Omicron is going to give us herd immunity because everybody's going to get sick. That's what someone else has told me said it's sad right. but because yeah. it's so contagious and it's so mild that yeah. it may it's serve us to do us. this yeah. yeah um the uh do you because i've heard from someone that um they were this close to announcing a tour yeah i mean my source said he had very good sources yeah. and it was with the spike though they decided to hold off yeah. so uh do you think it's a greatest hits tour or do you think he's gonna hit letter to you maybe a throw in a western stars show like, I, wanted to, I wanted to be letter to you western stars 
Yeah, me I too. Think, I don't think we're gonna get that. Yeah. Because I don't think that sells tickets. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Bruce Inc. cares about how many people are in the stands, right? Yeah. And, and, as, and you know, as we've talked about, it doesn't matter what the hell he plays in Europe, they'll sell out. Right. He could be singing uh, Sesame Street songs, it don't matter. Yeah. Right. But here in America, I think, I, you know, I don't know, right? It's, it's after you just sign a deal for $500 million for your publishing rights, then yeah. you don't have to worry about the ego anymore, right? right. But I still think he'd love to go out with uh, U.S. some stadiums. Yeah. And the only way he does that is if he does the hits. Yeah. Right. So what? I mean, the, the songs that we all know, we everybody yeah. knows. Stuff. Yeah. Because you notice it, the normal thing, right, is the tour starts out with, you know, four or five of the new album. Yeah. And then as the album goes, you know, maybe the second round, it's down to two or three. Yeah. Um, I, I hope we get at least some. I, I think he's I would, proud I would, of the songs. Uh, um, I love you know, that album. I, I love both of them. I, 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 watched, I watched Western Stars a couple of weeks ago on a plane someplace. Like, yeah. man, I just, you know, I just really... Uh, it's just a beautiful that that but that I would prefer to see that just him doing a solo tour with Western Star. Oh, that would be so great. That would be I mean, wonderful. You know, Joe's request is how do you know, hey, you know lots of people. How do we get tickets to this barn place so we can go? To yeah, school, exactly. You know? Exactly. I mean, like I would love that. In fact, that was uh what Linda said. Uh, she whispered over we we're in the movie theater. How jealous of you are those people in the barn? I go yeah. so jealous. Uh, so immeasurable. jealous. Yes, immeasurable. exactly. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll be, I'll stick to my guns on this theory. I don't give a damn what he plays. Absolutely. Listen, he's 72. Obviously now he has more money than he knows what to do with. So it's not a yeah. money thing. If he wants to play whatever, I'm good with it. You know, really well, honest. and I, I just sent out today the episode where um, Terry and I talked, to, we did a review of the No Nukes tour you know, and the DVD release and the Blu-ray. And um, we made the argument for everyone who goes, oh, he's old. What if he can't do three hours anymore? If you got that 90 minutes with that intensity, you and I are going home happy. Yeah, I mean, I got four songs and it was as good as I've seen him in quite some time. Right. I mean, just because, I mean, you know, I'll, God, I, I'm, I'm jealous, right? Like, how? Yeah. I, he's 10 years older than me. I can't, <laughs> where does that shape? Exactly. You know? Me too. And don't get me wrong. I don't know if they can play under two oh. hours. I, no. you know, but, hey. but, you know, I think just in their nature. But hey, two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, I'm through. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a survey on Backstreet's right now. I said two and a half to three is my guess. Yeah. We, we also, get that, three, that three thing is it's too much for us. Well, right? yeah. And I also agree that they could always bring back the, you know, the intermission. The intermission. We, don't have, we, don't, you know, we don't have an opening band. We can just do, yeah. you know, start on time, do yeah. an hour and a half, take a break, do an hour. Yeah. Right? There you go. I mean, Perfect. Like an hour is really what the encore is currently. I mean, you know, exactly. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, that's our classic story. We were in Gothenburg last time, you know, and, and at three hour mark, Joe goes, I'm getting kind of tired. I said, Do you want to go sit down? Because we had seats because we we're in a pitch. It's like, yeah. well, we're just getting to the good part. Right? <laughs> yes. At the three hour mark, everybody else is already loading up. You know, they've already tore the stage down at three hours. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're getting on there. Yeah. My friend, thank hey, you. Before we go, I got one question yes. for you. Yes, I need to hear about this Jackson three that I saw on uh, on the interweb. So yes, so uh, we were at. And um, I know all your listeners really want to hear about that more. Yes, than they, they do. Comments. That's okay. I will. I will post the picture. Uh, I, when I post the, I will put the poster. Uh, I will. Um, right. We don't need to have a picture of you. Uh, I'll just use that for my picture on the. You know, when I put out the podcast. So, um, Chris, Lynn, and I all went to see Sarah Hickman yeah. at Port David's pub. And you, you know how much I love Sarah Hickman. Yeah. And uh, so um, she was, you know, in one of the best values in Dallas front row, 35 bucks each to, you know, and so we're there and we're enjoying Sarah. And so she gets up and she, the band leaves and she says, I'm just going to do a few Christmas songs with my guitar. And, um, I will tell you this story and then I'll tell you one more story that you will appreciate as a 
fellow resident of Texas. Um, she goes, I'm going to do the Brave Combos version of Must Be Santa. You may have heard Bob Dylan's version, right? Who's right. kind of man with Brave and White? And so she says, I need someone to sing background. Mm -hmm. And no one will go. Nobody. No one, you know. No. We're and, all brave until we get the opportunity. Then we're yeah. scared of that. And Chris had just enough of that brown water <laughs> he said i'm going and he yeah. grabbed linda and linda's like no i'm not going yes lj yeah. and i'm like okay i cannot let these two go right. so the three of us went there and we sang background on nice. uh, must be santa nice. and uh so afterwards the someone posted on facebook and a photographer was there and posted two or three pictures of the show and they were looked really good. And so I replied, uh -huh. I said, any chance did you get? Yeah. And, she, and he posted that. So that was the story of that. So awesome. yes, the Jackson three. Nice. Nice. And, uh, Chris said, you can tell I was drunk, but you know what? If you're gonna be on stage, you gotta bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. here's, here's the story. She was, she said that she was asked to sing at the state Capitol around Christmas several years ago. And they, the legislature, whoever was coordinating, said, you need to give us a list of what songs you're going to sing. And so she gave them a list. And at the last minute, she goes, you know, I want to do um, the John Lennon song, War is wow. Over, right? Yep. So she brings it and she starts singing. And not one legislature starts singing. Wow. They just, the whole state of Texas. Yep just stared at him like what are you doing singing this song what do you mean war is over right. and sarah said she was ready to break down but they had let people in the balcony right and everyone in the balcony yeah, started singing the yeah. regular citizens started singing and she said it was beautiful but she goes nope she goes i don't care whether you blue or red then none of them legislation were like what no war we can't do this we're texans that's right it doesn't feed the machine exactly so, so yeah. i just thought that was great so awesome. yes that's the story of the jackson three awesome i had to know because it was like oh, i'm so great i love it you know, um hear. hopefully um I'm going to get to Houston again for fun, or you're going to get to Dallas yeah. for something, and we can see each other soon. I hope you have a wonderful holiday with yeah, your you family. Too, I know it's I know it's your favorite holiday. Absolutely. It is. You know, it yesterday, is. I, remember I was turning the lights off, and I'm like, hey, there's a, there's a new Christmas tree here. I'm like, what the hell is this? Oh, there was a sale at Hobby Lobby. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what Christmas trees. She's up to 14 Christmas trees in the house. So I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. That sounds great. Well, so I was at work today and they, uh, the head of marketing and her partner in crime. So Elise and Ray walked in my office. They're like, you got a minute? I go, sure. What's going on? So the whole office is decorated for Christmas and we always do a decoration a contest. Like you win the trophy for the year if your area was decorated best. And she goes, we're thinking about having kids she goes we've got employees kids mm -hmm. that are off for school we're going to have them come in and do the judging mm -hmm. like, oh that's perfect so will you wear the santa suit i'm like <laughs> i will wear the santa suit yes i will nice. Nice. so i will be santa tomorrow and i will be taking photos and i will send you but you know the good news is for you it's a slim down santa it is years. a slim down suit. it would so that's be. awesome yeah so it, i may actually have to put a pillow I, in my stomach Merry right, Christmas, man. my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. We will talk to you soon. Yeah, See you later. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. You can reach the podcast via email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter, at setlustingbruce, and my personal Twitter is at jessejacksondfw. We have a website, www.setlessingbruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts, as well as other music-themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All-Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Bruce shirts, as well as a Merry Question t-shirt. 
There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, said Listening Bruce. The theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.